Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I'm gonna build the roll cage for my Datsun. Okay, so first step in building a roll cage is to clean out the interior and actually work out where it needs to go. So that means fitting the seat to ensure that there's actually enough room for everything to go back into the car when it's done. The, uh, the last thing I need to do is build the roll cage too far forward and then I try and put a seat in and I'm hunched on the steering wheel and nothing fits. So let's get rid of some of this junk. I just started looking further into my interior and it actually looks like the seat rails on the driver's side and the front half of the seat rail on the passenger side has been cut out. Obviously they must have had a race seat in there at some stage. So they've welded in these angle brackets back in to obviously fit original seats back in because this is more of the original seat height. So now I've got to try and fit the seats into the car. Now, uh, there were two sets of seats that came with the car. Uh, this set is in better condition than this set, but this set actually has rails on the bottom, although it actually has a very interesting way of padding out the base of the seat with um, some, <laughs> obviously the springs and the cushions went. So they just wedged some timber in there and some rubber straps and hope for the best. And even the back of the seat looks like it was held up by wooden blocks. Not sure if that's actually a good safety measure or not. Uh, I'm thinking not. In any case, this seat doesn't have any rails, so I'm gonna take the seat rails off of this, bolt them onto here, and then bolt the seat in the car and uh, see how we sit. Okay, so I've placed this seat in here and I've discovered that the, the new rails that they put in are roughly in the right position, but they obviously had different seats set up because the holes they've got drilled in at the moment don't line up. I'm not overly concerned with that because I can sit the seat onto the, into place and get the seat in the right spot so I can actually drive it. The pedals are in the car anyway, so I can see the pedals. I can reach the steering wheel. I can get my perfect driving position and I've moved it all the way back. So there's plenty of room in here, as I can see, to fit the cage. So now I've got my seating position, I can now start planning out my roll cage. Okay, so now my seats are out, I've got this piece of uh, angle iron that I'm just sort of sitting in here to try and work out where the foot of my roll cage main hoop is going to go because the first thing you need to do is work out your rough measurements of where the main hoop's gonna go, where your mounting points are gonna be, and um, start planning out the dimensions of the cage and everything. So I'm gonna have trim inside this car. So you wanna get all the trim panels out and get the trim, uh, work out where the trim goes. So you can work out your distances from everything and give yourself an allowance so that the roll cage can fit in the car without actually interfering with anything. I found that this corner down here, this is where I'm going to mount the, uh, the base of the main hoop. I'm probably, because there's this sort of, uh, this angled slope in the base and a flat piece of the base here, I'm gonna make sort of a bit of a, um, a strange shape uh, mounting point down the bottom here and mount it sort of partially on this angle and then a little bit onto the, um, straight onto the base of the car so that I have a good solid mounting base. Let's start getting my base calculations and, and my base measurements and work out roughly where we're gonna start building this, uh, this main hoop. The main hoop is the most important part of the roll cage. Every roll cage expands from the main hoop, whether it is a fully built rally spec over the top roll cage or a basic half cage, bolt in half cage like this. It all runs off of the main hoop. It's the first and basic part of the roll cage. To get my measurements, I've worked out where my feet are gonna be. I want my uprights to come up at 90 degrees directly straight up from the floor, and then I'm gonna make them kink in slightly 
to follow along the sides of the, uh, well, this car doesn't have B pillars, but uh, where the B pillars would be on this car, and then across horizontal on the roof. So I'm gonna have two bends on either side to um, shape my cage. So what I've done is I got a, um, an old piece of the roll cage tube and I sat it in here and got it so that it was, it was level this way with the body of the car and worked out my width. Then I worked out the width of the outermost point of where the cage is gonna sit at the roof. Now it won't actually touch these points because the cage is not gonna have a sharp bend on it, it's gonna have a curved bend on it. But I worked out where that point should be, where that imaginary point should be, and my curve will sit below that point. So I've got my width up here. I've worked out that I want my corner of my middle bend to be just below, about three centimeters below the window line of this carb. Now I've got all my measurements, let's move over and I'll transfer them onto my template. I've laid down these pieces of masking paper so that I can transfer my measurements onto my template for my main hoop. So first thing is I wanna find the, the center. So I'm gonna mark a line in the center and then work everything off of that. Just showing you here why I'm running a little bit slower today. This is the, uh, so it's 43 degrees inside the garage here today. It's really hot. It's really, really hot. And the camera keeps shutting down. So um, I'll try to keep moving on. The camera's overheating. All right, so now I've marked out all my measurements onto my paper on the ground. And uh, I have my rough shape of the main hoop that I need to make. Now, what I'm gonna start with is I've got my cheetah tube, which is actually a piece of um, the correct size tube that I bent up in my tube bender so I know exactly the shape of the curve that my bender is going to make. And what I do is I use this tube and I actually marked where the start of the bender needs to be lined up. And I lay this on top of my plan and mark where I need to start my bends. And then I can get my point from the center of where to start the first bend. I've got my tube for my roll cage. Now this is tube, it is not pipe. Um, there's a difference. Um, and I've got my tube bender, which I made up in, a, uh, in another episode. So I'll link it down below, building my roll cage tube bender. Um, I designed and built it myself and the plans are up on my Facebook page. Um, if any of you want to uh, copy the design, you're welcome to go for it. Now this tube is, um, is CAMS correct. So our uh, Australian Motor Racing Authority, uh, this is the correct size that is approved by them. So I have now, I've marked the center of uh, my length of tube. This is a three and a half meter length. The lengths come in seven meters. I got them to cut it in half because I can't transport seven meters. Three and a half should be just, just about right for the, uh, the length of the main hoop. It's just over what I need for a, uh, a small car. If you've got a bigger car, um, be aware that um, it uses a surprisingly large amount of tube and you can't join it. It's got to be one solid piece all the way around for safety reasons. So um, I marked my centre and then as I marked on my template, I knew I wanted to start my bend at 320 mils away from the centre to start my bend for the first arm of the main hoop. So um, now I'm going to bend it and um, see how I go. Also, just FYI guys, I am far from an expert roll cage builder. This is the second roll cage I've ever built. So um, take everything I say with a pinch of salt, but uh, I'm following the specs and the first one came out okay. So I'm quite comfortable with um, the way I'm doing this anyway. I've actually been delayed by a couple of hours in there because uh, the bottle jack I was using has died and uh, it's full of oil, I've bled it, I don't know what's going on, the seals must have gone inside or maybe it's just uh, too much pressure for it. It sort of, it did struggle a bit when I did my uh, 911 roll cage and I haven't touched it since. So either way, I've changed over to this um, 15 ton jack, so hopefully this jack should do the job, but I've had to weld on a piece and fix things up, so Back into it, and let's see if this will bend the, uh, bend the tube. All 
All right, so I've laid my tube down on top of my template. So this is the first corner I'm trying to get. So if you can see the pencil marks here, my center mark is slightly off. It's probably about 10 mil off. So my angle is good. My angle is really good compared to the, uh, the marks. But uh, you can see where I marked it to paste my bend is out by about 10 mil. So that's fine. All I'll do is I will adjust where I start my next bend when I go over to the other side. Okay, so now I've moved the tube out of the way and I've got my cheetah curve in line on this end where it's got to start. And there's my marking point for where I want to start the curve. And you can see that is the curve I want to get it lined up so that when I curve it, it should be level here. So this is, this is where I want to place my next curve. So I transfer that mark, that mark there straight down onto my, my paper. I'll mark where I need to start. So now, I, now it's time to uh, bend my small little 20 degree curve. Okay, so I place my tube back into the bender for the second bend. And once you start doing the second bend, it is vitally important that you make sure that the existing bend is completely square with the bender because otherwise you're gonna have bends that go all over the place and your, your cage is gonna be kinked and you want your main hoop to be nice and straight and square and even. All right, now I've got that leg the way I want it. Um, I'm gonna remark my center because I was out. Now I'll remark my bend. Okay, it's all looking really good. It's all sitting in spot perfectly now. Let's chuck it back into the bender for the last bend and uh, we should have the main hoop all bent into place. Okay, so I've sat my main hoop all bent up now back on my template and it is spot on. So now all I have to do is hope that I actually got the measurements of the car right in the first place. Okay, so like everything on this build, it's two steps forward, one step backwards. As you can see, I, uh, I thought the frame, the shell of the car was really good because this side is, uh, is in reasonably good condition. But back here, I think they might have welded in a new floor at some stage. You can sort of see this weird uh, weld line along here where somebody's replaced the floor, but the original floor at the, behind it still had the rust in it. So this rust is, uh, has to be cut out and replaced. And while I'm at it, I thought I would go through and uh, these flat panels, where, where it's nice and flat and smooth, I can tell that the, the, the panel is, is solid. But where it looks like anything that's sort of lumpy like this could potentially have rust underneath. So I'm gonna go through the whole floor of the car and just double check everything and make sure there's no rust. So going through this, there's not too, it's not too bad. This corner, again, is similar to the other side. There's a few holes here. And the rest of it is not pretty, but it's, uh, the new floor is good, the new floor is solid, but uh, around the edges is where the issues are. So I've got a few patches to put in before I can move forward. So much for having a rust-free car. So the patches are in for both sides now. It's uh, looking much better. And every week it doesn't feel like I really get that much done, but things are happening. At least the, uh, the main hoop is done. But I'm out of time. It's, it's getting late on Friday and I've got to edit this tonight and get it up. So um, that must mean it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1999, 
Renault bought a controlling stake in Nissan. And in 2001, Carlos Gozin from Renault became the new CEO of Nissan. His plan was to make the Z profitable again. They aimed the new 350Z as a Porsche Boxster competitor. It was released in 2002 with a hotter version of the 3.5 litre V6 found in most of Nissan's range. Initially with 287 horsepower, which was up to 300 horsepower in 2005, the 350Z was available in seven trim packages. Base, Enthusiast, Performance, Touring, Grand Touring, Track and Nismo. So again, that's it for another week. I always feel like I don't get much done and finding more rust in the floor after I had my rust-free car really <laughs> doesn't make me feel good about it, but I'm gonna get there. It'll get fixed up. It's just gonna take a little bit more work getting it ready. Anyway, uh, if you wanna help the channel out, please head down to the description below and you can pick up some of the shirts, hoodies, or coffee mugs that we've got uh, in the store. And, um, Probably won't be back for a couple of weeks due to uh, Christmas break, etc. Trying to uh, work things out, but uh, I'll see what I can get in between there. But I don't think it'll be a full episode straight away. In any case, please uh, like and subscribe to Home Built by Jeff, and you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. See you guys. It was released in. Three point five litre. Three point five litre V six. <laughs> okay. Performance. <laughs> you didn't think I could do that.